Well, good morning and welcome back to the hollowed grounds of Winthrop Gold. It's the second day, Liz, and man, I just hope we don't have to deal with six hour rounds today. You know, I know a lot of the players don't want to hope for that either. Um, although, you, can you believe what happened yesterday? Dave Feldberg shooting hot rounds? Well, wow. I mean, this was put together to bring the average player to the elite player, and it is nice to see two of our elite players, two of our thousand plus rated players up on top, Dave Felberg and Dave Wiggins Jr. You're right, they're battling it out and it's gonna be a tough day today for them. However, the weather is beautiful. It's South Carolina and it's USDGC. Well, one of the best things about coming to the USDGC is meeting new players. Here's some kicker, living loud, meet the players. Kyle Maudy, Denver, Colorado, proudly representing Phoenix Disc Sports. What's up, PJ? Scott Smith, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Charlotte Disc Golf. Thank you. I'm Brandon from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm representing Big Deal. Jason Burnett from Huntsville, Alabama, Rocket City Chain Gang. Anthony Mock, Huntsville, Alabama. I'm Bobby Brody from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, here to check out the USDGC. Jeff Crawdaddy Manette, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Sean Coach Manette, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Earl Frazier, be on the lookout for Elf Disc. Jeremy Locke with Tyler, Texas. So a shout out to RCDC. Margaret McKenzie, West Monroe, Louisiana. Go Saints LSU, yay! Derek Brzozowskis from Massachusetts. My favorite course is Mabel Hill. I'm Steven Economist from uh, Western Massachusetts. And, um, Shout out to Nifa. Nick Economist, Western Massachusetts, and my favorite person is Martin Smith. George Economist, Worcester, Massachusetts. Hi, Melina. Hi, my name is Steve Adkison, and I'm here from Des Moines, Iowa, representing the Bushwhackers. Uh, Steve Hatcher from Mustang, Oklahoma, representing Twisted Flyer and OKC DGA. John Hatcher from Yukon, Oklahoma, uh, representing Twisted Flyer, Oklahoma City Disc Golf Association. Hi, I'm Dave Hammer from Portland, Oregon. Hi, I'm Cameron Todd from Wingate, North Carolina. Shout out to the world. <laughs> I'm Charlie Coleman from uh, Northwood, from North Carolina. I'm Ken Climber from Florida, Florida. Shout out to my lovely lady Kelly and our baby. Always some eccentric individuals in our sport, and I just love to meet a new human. You bet. You know, they're coming from all over the country, and they've got such a unique perspective, especially with this new format at the Performance Edition. Well, they all have hopes and dreams of being a USDGC champion. Now, let's get out right now and let you see some live action from the second day here at Winthrop. Welcome to the second day's competition of the USDGC Performance Edition. Oh, we got something a little special for them today, Liz. That's right. You know, everybody on this card is walking into hole, infamous hole 888, hole number 13 here at Winthrop. It's 888 feet, and if you can't see it from right where you're looking, there is a lot of OB on this hole. Well, and this is Phil Arthur on the tee. And the wind is coming out of the wrong direction. Wow, well, Phil Arthur roar. is absolutely trying to get all of this shot. And he is fair just by maybe a foot and being very, very aggressive off the drive. You know, he put so much angle, I thought he was trying to roll it. He just took something so overstable and just worked it. A beautiful drive. Now here's Jeff Manning to the D. He's out of Camp Hill, PA. That's right. Arthur is a 1020 rated player. Jeff Mannett is a uh, 921 rated player. So if he can play it just on the fairway, he should have a chance at this hole. Oh, perfect drive from Jeff coming down. He's going to get it in bounds. And this hole is notorious for racking up big numbers. This group teed off this morning just a little after 830. And these guys are handling the hole well so far. Now on the tee, that's Cliff Griswold. 
Well, it's hard not to handle a uh, ground of disc golf well if you're playing with Phil Arthur. He is a very happy guy, you know, always stays positive and Another makes Another sure beautiful plays shot, well. Liv. These guys are lacing this hole. Cliff came here all the way from Porterville, California to be a part. All right, now we're on a Joseph Pole. He's 935 rated out of Wisconsin. I'm sure glad to be in this warm South Carolina weather. Yeah, he's from Minocqua. That's not too far from where Barry uh, spent a lot of his time growing up in Stevens Point, I believe. And here's Joseph. Well, we have right, three drives in bounds, Liz. That's right, this is not what we've seen. This drive, oh, unless it's love, a Liz. huge skip, is going to stay OB. Oh, oh. Hits the curb, didn't get an opportunity for it to work, and Flair and Joseph, our first victim of the OB here. He's in on one, he's out on two. And Liz, he's right where he was just a minute ago on the bet. He's throwing three. Yeah, you bet, especially with the rules in place this year, Billy. Um, again, this hole, you know, the other guys threw it just under 300 feet, maybe 250. Hanging wide right, unless it, it's got a big flare skip, but just catches the very top edge of the curb. He gets curbed. Good job by our cameraman there, Casey Goodrum. That thing was heading right for his foot. He didn't move, just lifted his foot and just went right on by. That's a pro job. Well, back to the tee. In on one, out on two. In on right. three, mm -hmm. out on four. He is now through. He's going to a side Can you feel the wind that just picked up, Billy? What a terrible, scary shot for him. Well, it's safe, it's short. He's gonna be next out. Now that's a 100-footer. He's got it out there. Let's get on over and see if Joseph can handle it. He's laying five, but the rest of the group laying one in great positions. Oh, Liz, he is, uh, he's, he's kneeling. I don't know if he's praying or thinking, but. Well, he just racked up a huge number and you know, for He's only about 80 feet off the tee. Well, you know, and for everybody that's watching, this is a very hard hole. This is one of the most infamous holes here at Winthrop Gold. Oh, let People me just tell all it. you guys at home now. If you think that you could come here and just lace this hole, you just bring your fanny right on over and you'll feel the pain because unless you are a world-class player, this hole puckers you up and causes this kind of damage on a regular basis. Joseph Paul right now, we're experiencing the pain with him. This is his sixth shot. He might be 80 feet off the tee, Liz. And the wind again, it's picking up. It always picks up in the afternoon. Oh boy, he's going big. Oh, this is so dangerous. Only time will tell. I mean, it's got to hold the line, but it, wow, great oh, shot. A perfect shot. And almost threw onto the group in front of him. Um, he's definitely not taking any time to wait. The group may have even been distracted with his shot, but. Well, we've got some good players that got off the box here laying one. Let's get on down and see how they handle it because that doesn't mean anything, that first shot. There's a lot more golf left on this hole. Well, Liz, I mean, I, I want to say that you're seeing one of the reasons that, that you're going to get big numbers. Phil's on his chair. He's got his hat off. He's got his head in his hands. This guy's got plenty of time to run down, pick up his disc. Everybody's sitting. They've been on this hole already three to five minutes, and we're no more than 100 feet off. That's right, Billy. And all day yesterday, the, you know, people are just like, the rounds are so long, so long, so hard. And this right here, this hole is one of those reasons. I mean, right now, these guys are only uh, 340 feet about away from the tee pad, and they still have to make it all the way over another OB line onto oh, an I'm island green. I'm going to have trees. to disagree. He's no more than 250 feet from that tee, and he is at least... He's got two good shots here to try to get himself in position. And here's the options they've got right now as Jeff Manis steps up. He can a great shot. He can put it out over the road or he can take the big Anheuser. And with that, I mean, your options really get narrowed. That's right. Well, he seems like he's going to throw an Anheuser approach here, getting around all oh, the that trees. that could be trouble. It's got to get down, Liz. Well, with the help of that tree, it kept him in bounds. You know, a, a clap here and there, but he knows he got lucky. You know, Phil's got a big smile on his face knowing that thing was heading OB, but you'll take the love any way you can get it. Well, that's right. Next up here, and all these players kind of putting it together, this is Cliff Griswold. He is an 8.86 rated player projected to shoot an 80 out here. 88? In 88. Well, this looks like it's his hole. It's 888 feet long. Yeah, these guys have been struggling. And, and, you know, this is the early morning round. The wind is just now starting to pick up, and this is not where you want the wind to pick up. Here's Cliff Griswold. He's only laying one, though. 
Well, yeah, I'm like Jason, he's, I mean, he's the only guy hurting right now. Everybody's been in bounds. They're taking size of relief. His second shot's in bounds. Well, he's down. We'll get on over now as Phil Arthur's gonna make his way towards his shot. He just mashed his drive, Billy. Well, it looks like Phil Arthur's gonna make the best choice here. He knows he mashed his drive and he can set himself up for a perfect approach. He's gonna make sure it's nice and flat so he can go to the green for his next shot. Well, that's where he wants to be. A huge drive followed by about a 100 foot putt. That's golf. This is what this course is. Well, you know, Cliff is in a good spot. He lays two. And this is a legitimate par five right here. If he can just get himself in position to get over. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like, oh, I was about to say, it doesn't look like he's going to take a run out, maybe a placement shot. But well, a lot he, of people are playing it oh, past those evergreens just there. Oh, yeah. Just a hyzer to the other side. Look, if you can get just past those evergreens, there is a beautiful flat spot, and there's an open window looking right at it. And he's to get up, Liz. Oh, he's in the culvert of rocks. Oh, my gosh. That's not exactly what he had planned, but he's is making his way down there, and he hasn't thrown OB yet, so. And Cliff is handling it. Another five feet there, and he would have been in the garden. Phew. Now, Joseph has a choice here, and I believe he's gone up and checked it out. He's not going to go for the green. It's a long way off, and he's probably going to do another Phil Arthur and just make his way to a nice landing spot. Well, I like the way he's playing. He's methodical. He's taking his time. Here's Jeff Manna. He's sending his son. How great what is this? a good caddy. I mean, he's, he's out here. We saw these guys at the Am Worlds in Rochester playing together and, and caddying together. And I mean, man, what a family experience here for Jeff and his son to get to be on the USDG grounds in competition. Yeah, you bet. He's And his son, I believe, knows the course a little bit better than he does at this point. He's saying, Dad, Dad, you know, that that spot's flat. That spot over there is a bad lie. Well, he's listening to him, and, uh, and that's another beauty thing. I mean, you want to talk about bringing a family together. You just get out and play a round of golf with your son, and you'll realize just or how daughter. much you... Or daughter. Or daughter, good <laughs> point. Realize just how much you do have in common. And here's Jeff, and this is one tough lie. I mean, he sneaked up on this tree. You bet, and that's another difficulty factor of this hole. Even when you do make a good shot, you have to stay away from these tree bases as there are pine needles that are in abundance. He is making the attempt to get across. Oh, he needs a big flare. Oh, he hits oh, the he curb and wobbles curbed. to the cement. Oh, Dad couldn't believe it. He took it well. The son's hat came off. They knew they made a good decision. I think he's going to try it again, Liz. Well, you know, he got, I don't know if he's expecting or even factoring in the tailwind that we have here, and that can push it straight down. Well, that was his four shot, so he's in on four. He's out on five. He's now throwing six. He's that giving more definitely air. a lot higher. That's not going across the no, road. He's trying to just get down on that flat spot we were talking about before. And let me tell you, when we get over there, you'll see just how sweet that is. Okay, here is our 10, almost 10, 20 rated golfer, Phil Arthur out of Georgia. Now he is no stranger to this course, no stranger to this game. He's been on the lead card uh, here before. Yeah, not gonna make the lead card this year. He's laying two here. This is his third shot. Big He's shot, that, that looks great. That looks like it's almost going for the pin. Oh, oh wow, Liz, that was just not expected. What you just seen, guys, is the epitome of Phil Arthur's week. He shot a 59 to qualify. He came out 57, yesterday. 57, I believe, Billy. Uh, correct, a 57. And he came out yesterday and just couldn't get anything going. Carter in 86, one of his worst rounds ever. And we just love that shot. That was beautiful. It did. It looked and great. And it was one inch short. You know, after watching uh, how many OB, how many red flags have we seen so far? Six on this hole? I mean, after you see so much OB, it's hard not to throw yourself. We'll feel this is really definitely a lot higher and a lot farther, but it's challenging. Oh, great shot by Filler. <laughs> Look at him. Well, he's in on three, he's out on four, he's up on five. He's going to have a relatively easy six. But you can see just with a great drive, a great placement shot, just how technical these holes are. Joseph Pohl now. And you know, he's in a good position right here. He laid to right here. He went on the opposite side of the culvert Phil did. And maybe 40 feet closer, he's still, what would you say, 350, 370 out, Liz? Well, yeah, you bet. But it's not only that. There's such a uh, depression in the earth there, Billy. It's like a going on, or uh, throwing a shot off of a water slide or something. It's so sloped over there. Well, it's very easy to come out with the nose up. He's got a oh, good angle on this. I don't know about that, Billy. He's going over. long. Oh, and he nailed a car. That car. Oh, he's rolling in here. Let's see if he can get some extra special love. 
Nope, it tried. It tried hard. <laughs> the and whole group was rooting for that as we had a unanimous awe oh, as it just curled out. And, you know, looking at the angle that it hit that car at, if that car wouldn't have been parked there, that may, may have had a chance to flare skip in. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not sure, but it... I'm not sure, Liz. I'm going to try and count. I believe he was throwing six. He pitched seven down. He was eight there, so he should have been in on nine, maybe out on... He might be throwing ten or eleven. I've lost count, Liz. Well, again, you know, just so the audience at home just knows how difficult this is, there are superstar players here taking huge numbers. These are guys that are, you know, guys you see your local leagues, and this is their first maybe ever this time he's got a chance, Liz, if he gets a big flare. He's up, wow. he's over, and that was his best chance to throw a, a penetrating line low and use that concrete to let it skip up on All right, the well, let's head over and watch these guys pitch over onto the island. Oh, boy, so... This is Cliff Griswold. Now, if he, again, if he would have, you said, just like you said, if he would have made it just a little bit further, he'd have been level with the basket. Right now, he's probably sitting about five feet below the basket. Well, not only that, Liz, I've been over there. I've had to throw this shot. You are almost forced to do a standstill shot. I mean... Almost forced. You are forced, Billy. It's yeah. rocky. It's a difficult place to throw from, and it's you almost see, 300 feet to the bucket. Yeah, he is trying. He is head height that, and he's trying to work that footing out now. That is a difficult thing, but after you get that worked out, you've got a hill almost head height right in front of you and you can see it's forced him to go up he's on the green well he made a smart shot from where he was at he's safe he's on the green and now he can maybe attempt a bogey well jeff man it, it's he's playing the hole well except for this very last shot uh he threw an ob right off the bat now he's gonna get in maybe another disc from his son these guys are working well together as a team well he and was laying he his third shot three. went went ob i believe so he was in on three out on four he's now laying five he's looking to get up and down only take a seven and actually jeff's projected score on this hole is a seven so his personal part would be okay there well it looks like uh it's got to slow down oh, i like it, the basket great shot Coming in about 15 long, he's going to have an opportunity to put his seven in. And Mr. Phil Arthur just doing his best to grind through the five plus hour round. Well, Cliff Griswold now. This is another problem with having a, a big group and big numbers. Liz, I'm not sure what shot this is for Cliff. I want to say this is his seventh shot. It's hard. Every player has thrown OB. Multiple players have thrown OB multiple times on this hole, and you know they're they're great. doing their best. A great up by Cliff. He is happy about that. He says, "Give me off of eight eight eight. Give me another hole." Oh, what a beautiful day! I tell you, anybody that's watching this right now, it just has to absolutely be aware that the numbers on this hole have been high all week long, and you know it's just what this hole is. Well, I'll tell you again. If you're not a thousand rated player and you think you can come right on down here and manipulate this hole and get you one easy five, I got some news for you. You don't know what you're talking about. This hole is brutal. And it's not just the OB, Liz. It's not just the, the myth and the lore. It's the wind. A lot of times you've got a gallery. These guys showed got up. got a fairway that's only uh, 100 feet wide. <laughs> Here's Jeff Manning. And All right, he's happy. He is done. That team can move on. Boy, he and his son, the caddy, they are just having a big day. And look at the energy he's got out here on hole 14. Well, you bet. And again, for these players, these guys have sacrificed a lot of their personal time, their uh, their money to be here to experience the USDGC. Here's Joseph Pohl. All right, he's done with this hole. Good for him. And Phil moving in. Phil about one inch away from a beautiful birdie and not going to happen. It's just been the way his week's gone. Well, his hat's off and back on. He's going to make his way on. He's a, a phenomenal player. Well, that's something special for you guys. You hear about it all the time. You can hear the wind picking up out here. This is early in the day, and that was the infamous 888 with Phil Arthur as the head star in that group, followed with Joseph Pohl, Cliff Griswold, and Jeff Mannett. Like all great events, this event holds a history of its own. Right now, let's take a look back at some of those great moments. Well, now, you know, out around the Coliseum, uh, this hole, I always kid and say, you know, these next two holes used to be one hole and it was a par five, mm -hmm. even though it averaged 6.7 or something. And now it's two holes and it's a par nine. Uh, this hole is really dangerous because the Avery, you can't bomb. 
because of the way the configurations of the rope. You've got to plot your way out on this hole. Now you can bomb the second shot, but you've really got to plot your way down this particular hole. Yeah, right here I'm just kind of playing for a position here. Um, this year I was throwing a, a hyzer, trying to bring it out on the fairway and have it push slightly left so I can actually have a nice approach at a, at a side arm to the green. Um, you can definitely put a put a little move on it, but you, you have those ropes over to the left, you can see there. And you're playing on the side hill and it can, it can roll as well, so you just want to play safe, get it into play, and then strike from there on the second shot. I, and, I'll, and I'll mention the fact, this is the hardest this is the hardest part for on, on the course. I, I think so too. Yeah. Just the way the fairway slopes and the and drop off. Up by the and green. The, green the green's on a way. on a total side hill slant. Are you trying to come in side arm because of that green if you can? Um I wasn't this year. I was playing down over there to the left and then trying to throw a big hyzer from there. Uh, in 2009, actually this year, I was throwing sidearm, sidearm, and actually getting birdies on this hole. So it's... You know, well, the sidearm sets up for the second shot. Certainly, but I, in, in 08, in, in this, at this current time, I, my, my sidearm wasn't, I wasn't as confident with it. I've been working with Avery and just trying to just get a little bit more confident on the sidearm, but um, definitely sidearm is ideal coming into this green. A lot of people throw rollers um, because Very of the risky. side hill slant it kind of helps slow them down but you're you have to throw in the ob and that quite grass a bit. is a lot higher a lot than the green on the fairway down in that little valley there so whoa now how far can this kid throw you guys see him out there he's one of those with a stack of discs that can throw 500 foot shots and then run sprint down there and get them and come back and start over oh easily just so just his his technique is a really pure really clean smooth technique and then speed um, you, you can definitely get the disc out there with just the technique and speed portions of it all. It's not the most powerful shots, but he can throw a long, long way to get him out in the open. Now here's the roller, like Nate was saying. You can see that's OB. The entire <laughs> way. Man, that's just, just uh, you know, that's and, so scary. And here it comes. Look at that late flip over. Back in bounce. bounce. And that is scary. That is scary. Well, yeah, if when it, it comes down to it, when it comes come down back to it. He's walking up, what, 30 feet and re -teeing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's re-throwing from there. And and I'm, you know. This I'm, is perfect, Nate. I mean, you couldn't get much closer. Wow. You kept it out of the rocks. That's great placement right there. Yeah. That's some skills right there. Yeah, I did that on purpose, I'll tell you right now. Well, you got to lay up with, you know, within a foot or two of the no, line. That's and you a, a nice bomb look. from down there. Yeah, it is. And I'm throwing up, and I'm almost making it a longer shot because oh. you can see that almost skipped out of bounds. I mean, he's running over, he's checking it out, and wow, I got the green but flag. But that's the area guys are throwing rollers because they can't control that was lucky, it. For and sure. that was a bomb. I mean, that was f maybe 450, 4 425 to 450. Yeah, well, I don't even know. It's probably about 400 feet. I think it's like 360 from that line right there. From that, yeah, so I mean, I put it up close, and I was maybe so used to, and here goes Paul with a, with a sidearm short. He didn't really juice up on it. He didn't get to the hill we were talking about. Mm, and, and really from that position, he wants to rip one on that left-hand line. You and watch it, players be so tentative with that cross hill, side hill green that even watch Nate's, like if you throw a hyzer, it feeds down that hill and has a bunch of speed and skip that you usually see those shots skip OB. Definitely. I'm, you can show I'm taking us the side arm for the about. fact that it's bringing it back into the side hill with a, with a hyzer and keeping it hopefully a little bit closer, but and wow, watch that. this. Oh. I think we're all getting some good breaks on this hole at this point. I was going to say, he said you got lucky. Yeah, yeah I mean, watch me. I, I think I got lucky because I, I just, the skip didn't go out of bounds. Avery, I think he just hit a post. Nice you move hit there, that, Avery. hit the post? A little freestyle on the course. No, actually, uh, it just kind of just did a little wobble as it got up with a spin and, and rolled and back down the hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we're here in a position. This is this is a big moment right here. I mean, Avery's on a good little run. He's got a couple birdies in a row, and I'm I'm about I don't know. I'd say what 45 feet here. And um, uphill. And uphill and crosswind and, right to left. And and we're gonna see what happens here. It, it's th this is a huge moment, and 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 uh, you can see what I do. I thought it was in. Oh. I thought it was in. Oh. I really did. You saw my hands go over my head, and now I'm looking at it going, okay, just flip, and it stops. Oh, that right scary there. moment right there. No control. No control. And, I I mean, you can see how frustrated I am. But I'm like, okay, it didn't roll out of bounds. I can still make the next one. 
So in my mind right here, he just missed that birdie putt. Do you see and the door the cracking or do you see it wide open? I see the door cracking slightly a little bit more and knowing that he's going to par at best and I have a chance to go another stroke up on him here with a birdie. But still, I'm like 40, 42. Oh, that's Ashley. huge right there. That was gigantic. I can't tell you. When he made that putt, I'm like... Oh my God, Avery's gonna make these putts now. Well, and that's I mean, and watch what we were out. When Avery earlier, Jenkins starts making 45 footers, he's you're made in trouble. It several putts already, so that putt, you know, it, it wasn't his first putt. If it would have been, no way that would have went in. Probably not, but you never know. I mean, you always hope you can make every single one, but that was just at that moment on that oh. green from his location was incredible. And it was at a this great point, putt. the match being down by four now, gonna be down by three with this make here. Yeah, definitely. And, and and I'm sitting here going, wow, it was just six inches from a birdie and now I got to make this putt. And I'm just kind of thinking, I'm going, okay, just calm down, relax. Avery just made the putt. Don't worry about it. Go into your normal routine. And you know what? Do what you do best. Make putts and, and make them in, in the, at the biggest moments. And, and so hopefully. You've got, you've got a little guy trying to creep into your head at this point, I guess. Oh, yeah. No, he's in down. there. No, he's, he's already, already in there. there. I mean, he's, there's a guy in there going, okay, you need to make this. And wow, I almost oh. made it. And here it comes. And this is when the frustration comes in. This is when frustration comes in. And. Um, and Avery's already in the bucket. Avery's already done. Avery's already done. And, and, I, and uh, so what I'm doing is, again, I'm just walking away, and I'm looking away, and I'm going, okay, this is the U.S. Open. This is the biggest moment of your life. Don't let this bother you. Avery's a great player, but so are you. And, and uh, you kind of just have to reset. I always, I always uh, reboot. So yeah, reboot. Say. I mean, a lot of people could have just stepped up there, marked it, and put it again, and possibly missed it. I took my time that I'm granted by the by the other guys in my group, and and um, and you just you really have to stay focused. That's a little bit of a lesson for everybody out there. Don't get frustrated. Step up and make the putts you know you can make. That's impressive right there. And now at this point, you know you're thinking, oh, don't hit low again. But you know. I mean, yeah, no, it, that could. Have, it was a huge changing point and turning point in the match at that, on this hole. But for him to roll away and stay in bounds both times could have been like another two strokes. I'm back by two strokes at this point with the birdie he bogeyed, and it could have been at that point maybe an even match or who knows if i would have hit the putts on hole two or maybe even like capitalize a little better on hole five it could have been a definitely a tie match well roll away roll away i mean that was a deciding factor right there could have went either way but those are the slopes and the hills that de define the greens here at winthrop so everybody out there today is dealing with the same thing they now know how that feels now let's get over to avery jenkins for a keen look at hole number five Hi, I'm Avery Jenkins, 2009 Disc Golf World Champion. We're here at pole number five at the Winthrop Gold Course. Uh, it's a par five, 1,053 feet. And uh, this is by far my favorite hole on the course, and it might be by far the best hole five in all of disc golf. Um, beautiful landscape, nice fairway, a lot of danger, a lot of water, um, beautiful lake, fountains, everything you want. But this is a very, very dangerous hole if not played correctly. Um, a medium to a uh, straight shot. You're not looking to get a whole lot off the tee pad, unless you're trying to three it at least. But you're really trying to play for a birdie four. Um, I, throw, I typically throw a sidearm out there in the middle of the fairway, keeping away from the danger to the left side, and placing a shot in the middle of the fairway to try to get another second shot up there to the edge of the water before you try to cross over to the green. Let's get on down to the landing zone, and I'll show you how to take it from there. So this is where you want to be. This is the garden. This is the ideal landing zone, about 300 feet off the tee pad. And you can see the basket in the distance. This is where you want to be. Nice fairway to the right side. And like I said, that danger to the left. Um, if you land in this area, you got two options. You got the straight shot down the middle, keep it in the fairway. Or my favorite, you can take the hyzer way outside in the gap here and try to hyzer it back into that fairway. Uh, I typically like that shot because the winds can kick up and I have a little better control on a hyzer shot coming in and spiking on the grass. And I do have to worry about that water to the left, like I said, so if you throw it wide enough with enough uh, angle, you can stick it on that fairway. But uh, that's where you want to be. This is where you want to be off the tee. That's where you want to be on your second shot. Next is in the green. I'll take it from there. So this is where you want to be on your second shot. Ideally, this is where you want to land. Um, you got a good look at the pin across the water. 
You also, if you don't have the shot or the winds are up, you can also go around and, and take it all the way around the outside of these trees. But uh, ideally you want to take it over the water or a big hyzer over the trees, which is what I like. Um, on, this, on this shot to get to the zone, you want to go as close to the water as possible, but keeping it safe so you do have that, you know, that third shot across the green. Um, a lot of players do go straight across with like a mid-range or like a fairway driver. I like to take a big Firebird or a, a Power Driver 2 over the top of these trees because you want to do want to keep it close. Um, the winds in the open here can really pick up and you want to be close to the basket as possible uh, to make a putt and I can judge a hyzer a lot better than I can a straight shot. So I'm trying to spike it next to the basket and uh, try dropping that four. Threes have been done here but a four is nothing, no shame out here. You want to get a, at least a birdie on this hole and if all of anything else fails, if you have to lay up a shot around the outside, you're probably taking a five. But uh, this is where you want to be on that third shot. Let's take it up to the green. So here we are on the green of hole five. And like I said, if I look at this flag, these winds pick up. It's uh, You have to dial in your shot, dial in your hyzer, very precise shots to get you know, a, a 10 foot putt on this hole. But like I said, taking that hyzer really minimizes your carry on, the, on that third shot across. But So you're taking your third shot over in the landing zone and bringing it to the green. There's a beautiful, beautiful hole. Like I said, my favorite hole on, on the Winthrop Gold USCGC course. And uh, quite possibly the best hole number five in the, in the game. So this is my baby and I, I, you know, I try to walk off with fours as much as possible. A three has been done, but I love a four on this hole. Get your birdie and go. Hole number five. Well, all right, now you guys know why that's one of Avery's favorite holes. And I tell you what, play it like Avery can and you know you'll be good. Well, let's get back out now. Some more live action for you from the second day here at the USDGC. See, has this hole changed through the year or what, Billy? Tell them what they saw before. Well, you can see three huge stumps out there, and those trees were generally uh, some of the biggest trees on the hole. Force you to choose a line, it is much more open, but However, to counteract that. <laughs> right, in almost the exact place where you were gonna land if you threw that shot. Now they've carved a little OB bunker out with ropes. And they've brought the ropes in on the right really tight. And here's the man of the day again right now holding on. Here's David Felberg. That's right, 1040 rated, leading the tournament. He's only missed two putts today and... Oh, what a nice friendly little skip. Yeah, Getting Billy calls that world roll. champ love, Liz. Instead of being wow. pinned behind the tree, scoots out around and he's in a beautiful spot looking at the hole. You bet. Next up on the tee is... Uh, it's it John like Olis. Uh, that's right. Now he's out of Portland just like Dave. You know, I wonder if they have ever practiced together. I would say they've had a couple of rounds together. Has to be. I mean, two quality players in the same area. The biggest problem John would have is getting Dave to be at home. What a risky shot coming in forehand, bringing the ropes on the other side of the fairway into play. He has executed it perfectly and right in the heart. <laughs> he got himself a little bit further than Dave Felberg. Well, here's a young man that if you haven't seen him throw, you've heard his name. This is Dave Wiggins Jr. And he is on the lead card here. He finished 11th at the Pro Worlds this year. He is really holding his own his first year in the pro field. You bet, Billy. He's, I mean, it's like he's got nerves of steel up here. He has to. He's USDGC lead card playing with Dave Felberg. Oh, he has ripped this, Liz. Wow. Oh, Liz, he has mashed this. And oh, boy, that Liz, is going to skip is... into OB. OB and thank goodness we put the cart in a spot where we felt like nobody could reach and he came in just before the cart so not in play but man was that a mash? Wow Billy. Uh, he's yeah, let's three. See. We'll see if he takes anything off of it here. Oh much different line Liz. Oh that's an incredibly different line. Wow that is up oh, high in the Liz, air. Liz he has absolutely crushed this thing. He's I got didn't it down. Think I didn't think throwers could throw this far on this hole, Billy. That was amazing. Wow, Dave Wiggins Jr. laying three, and he is just a little putter pitch away. Now here's Tyler Graham coming up. Oh, 922 oh. rated. He's gonna throw himself a nice looking placement shot. Went further than Felberg's shot again. Oh, further than John's as well. He'll have the second best shot here with a nice little hook thumb. That might even been a pancake. Well, it's let's go watch their approach, Billy. This is a tough hole. Lead card coming down the fairway of number eight. Well, I don't expect that Dave Feldberg, after throwing that shot, would expect to hear the words, you're out. That was a great looking shot. <laughs> well, he is in a perfect position. And look, he doesn't mind throwing first as long as he's got the shot. He wants right where he needs to be. 
You bet. I mean, look at this tunnel. There's a mandatory up there on the right. You've got an OB fence on your left. Well, this is a 592 foot. Oh, I love it, Liz. This is That's exactly what he needs. And curl. Wow, Dave Feldberg. He's absolutely showing these fellas how to throw. Well, that is a risky shot with the wood chips, but Dave got himself right where he wanted to, threw a beautiful little touchy roller up in there, curled it around, he's well inside the circle. Right, now, I mean, that's a new shot this year. He hasn't thrown that in the past years because in past years, there was actually a log preventing that shot from happening. Uh, you may call that a log, I call that a tree. <laughs> that thing was huge. Uh, All right, next up is gonna be uh, John Ollis out of Oregon again. It's actually Ollis, he says. Ollis, okay. Uh, and uh, you know, he's, Again, he's a grinder, Liz. He plays every weekend, and he competes at high levels on a regular basis. Well, he's definitely got uh, a calm nature about him. He's not rushing any of these shots. He's taking his time. Well, he's going to feel the USDGC experience. From where he's at, if he's got a little side-on flick, it is ideal for this hole. If you can just penetrate it down there low, let it finish towards the bucket. It looks like it's what it, he wants to line up to do. Well, the wind just picked up, but it absolutely sets up beautifully for this shot. You're right, coming into a sloped green, having to keep it low. You, know, you can come in with enough speed to actually throw a driver and get that skip. All right, well, Gotta get some legs, Liz. Yeah, I think it's gonna land just a little bit short, but again, he's left himself open for a putt, and it is a par four hole. It is, and he'll have something somewhere around the 30 foot range for his birdie opportunity. Oh, Tyler's stepping up and throwing a leg up. Boy, he did not take any time. He's caught some cabbage, and that's gonna drop it straight down and. How about this, Liz? He's up there right next to David Wiggins Jr.'s drive. Well, here we go. Now, this is his second shot to get down here. First one did go be a little bit short, and then it looks like he just hauled his butt out. I mean, that is a huge, long drive, Billy. I didn't think there was that much air up top. I mean, he really put that thing on a different line than he had the first one. And he's a good 80, 90 feet past. Oh, the boy, he's just... I don't know what happened there, but it looks like he just short-armed it a little bit. A little mm -hmm. disappointed with that shot, but... He's a little frustrated. He was throwing his fourth shot instead of his second shot, and uh, he knows he's got a bogey, so he'll get up. He'll get up and down, and he'll oh, be boy. okay. Oh, boy, look at this gallery walking behind Dave Felberg. He's got his caddy, good friend Ricky Wysocki, walking along with him today. This is the lead car to USDGC. Well, Tyler Graham is going to move in. He's got a tough putt. Wind is starting to pick up a little bit. There's such a tight alley here. Well, the gallery's picking up as well as, you know, everybody wants to see the lead card play. It is only Thursday afternoon. Well, it is an exciting lead card. Not only do you have your uh, 1040 rated player, you have a 1019, 993, and Tyler Graham who's playing well above his, oh, wow. Boy, he really went at that aggressively. And you can see that's where a 922 rated player versus a 1040 rated player, Dave probably would have laid that thing up, except he tried to throw it in and now he's got Let's a little Let's go find out where Dave's roller is. Well, we've got David Wiggins to line up his putt now after shortening the drive a little bit. The wind is intense back in this little alley. You can see the flag waving above the bucket straight in his face. And he bails out a little bit to the right. Air ball. Oh boy, he's probably struggling a little, struggling a little bit. Well, John Ola's setting up now. I mean, this is for Bird, and he absolutely wants to get this thing in the bucket. He is playing some great golf today, and he just wants to remain on that lead card. Who wouldn't? This is USDGC. All right, John, John Olis out of Portland, Oregon. Makes his putt, nerves of steel, 993 rated. Well, that was a birdie any way you look at it. Three strokes to play this 592 footer that has danger right, danger left, as well as a ceiling. Oh my goodness, look at Dave Felberg on the other side of that tree. Not that, even a problem from that distance at all. That is exactly where he wanted. He knew the hill would kill that roller out. He did hit a little something there to try to get it to pop up, but he put the right amount of speed on it. A great shot from Dave. Now here's Tyler looking to tap his out. We certainly hope you've enjoyed this. This has been some lead card action from the Tuesday, from the second day of the USDGC. And we're gonna get around the course a little bit, see if we can bring you some more action. I'm Billy Crump. I'm Liz Carr. And Boz on the camera. We are Clash DVD. This is the USDGC, and you have to qualify to get in this event. 
And we have one young lady in this event, Liz. That's right, we do. That's young Paige Bierkis. Now, Paige has been playing for quite some time. She's been playing since 2007. Uh, she plays in a handful of pro tournaments, has a handful of titles under her belt already. And, I mean, she qualified for the USDGC, and not only that, she's kind of holding her own. She's, she she's right in the middle of the pack. At 9.52 this morning, my buddy Phil Arthur teed off at 8.32, so she is absolutely holding her own. This group, eight over Justin Sanders, Ted Keith and Paige Bierkus nine over, and Stephen Harrison ten over. That was at the start of the round. We've got Stephen Harrison on the tee. All right, he chooses to take a straight route, which is probably the safest route as long as you can get in between those trees. Um, he Actually, is, that is Justin Sanders. I apologize. No worries there. Okay, now we've got Paige Bierkus stepping up to the box. What a great thing to see. She's second on the pad and in the middle of a big group of guys. Oh boy, that's got a nice job, Oh, not a nice problem. Job, she got Paige. confidence that went right through. That's oh, going to get down. Oh, it's going to have to dig. Nice um, shot by Paige Bierkus. That should net her a three pretty easily. Yeah, she is. She's got plenty of D, and she's playing here. I mean, not just with the guys, Liz. This is with the echelon here on this particular course, and she is absolutely holding her own. Coming second. Here's Ted Keith on the tee. Good shot there. Well, you know, Paige actually at the players party was lucky enough to win herself a bright, shiny new basket for her backyard. Nice. Her putting will get better as she <laughs> needs it. Now here's Stephen Harrison. All right, Stephen Harrison. And we are on 16. This is just a monster hole. 389 feet playing downhill. Oh boy, oh, now he's got to get this to turn over. Over. This is going to work, Liz. He's going to park this hole with that shot. Wow. Roll around, curl right Liz, next to the pin. I believe that was an accidental roller. I can't take for sure, but didn't look like he intended it. But you know what that's going to be? That's going to be a great birdie putt for <laughs> Steven. And they're going to come on down now. Number 16 here on Thursday afternoon at Winthrop Gold. Well, as the players are making their way towards the green here, it looks like Ted Keith is going to be out. Uh, you know, he threw a safe, conservative shot. This is the hole that if you don't want to be aggressive, you don't have to, and you can walk out of here with a nice three. Well, he's out of the Kansas Ooh, City he area. Ooh, a tester putt, but. And he actually, uh, he used to work a lot with Ross Stein, and he's now working with Randy on the PDGA Magazine. Very cool. I tell you, Paige Bierk is still not out. Now here's Justin Sanders, and he's just looking to try and get up and down as well. He's going a little more aggressive, and yes, the wind's pushed it over, but that's where you want to be, about 15 feet away. You bet, tailwind putt to boot. Now here's young Paige now, and I believe she's 13, is that correct? Some, somewhere in that area, I believe. Yeah, you bet, she's just a young woman making her name in this sport. Oh, what she's a got beautiful a good looking, shot. confident shot. Got Way her go, dad, Paige Doug, Bierkus. on the bag. How great is that? What a great weekend trip for the whole family. All right, let's make our way down to this accidental roller. I don't believe he is out. We're going to have to watch some other some other guys putt here, but I tell you, that was a roller that turned out to be good. Well, these guys are having the experience of their life. I mean, Paige Bierk is not only playing at the USDGC, she's playing with some great quality guys each day, and she's going to be just getting better as the years go on. Now here's Ted Keith, he's moving in here. This would be, actually it is going to be Steven, and this is for a birdie on this hole. I'm going to say an accidental roller, but what do I know? He could have planned that from the hotel this morning, Liz. Either way, he's got to be thinking, I'm going to take advantage of this. I am inside of the circle here. Oh, he made it. Damn. That hit about one millimeter below the top band and sunk all the way down into the bucket. Well, the wind has really picked up fiercely here in the last 20 minutes. And you here's bet. Ted Keith. And it's kind of a side wind. That's a tough wind to deal with on your putts. That is one tough putt. Oh, hey. Not a problem for Ted as he bangs his three in. Justin's going to move in around the back. If he can tap this in, Paige Bierkus is going to have to avoid bumping her head on the cage. We're going to have... Three. Oh. oh, what a casual putt that was. And Billy had to go ahead and try and put it out there with the three pars, but a bag on putt with a with his seat in his hand, not my fault, Liz. I'm not sure. It looks like, yeah, you bet. What an embarrassing moment. That's, you know, this is the USDGC. Yeah, you got to take every putt. You cannot take anything for granted. And Justin just took that little 10 footer for granted, and it's going to cost him an extra stroke. A lesson learned here at the United States Disc Golf Championship. Well, we're here at hole 17. We're coming in a little late. Patrick May, you can see right up there, has just uh, laid up. Yeah, and that's such a wise decision on this hole, especially out here on these elements today, Billy. Well, here's Kevin Knuckley. 
Oh, that looks like it's up in the air high enough. It's gonna be tight. Just neat. Oh, just over. Oh, what a great shot. He's gonna have a great attempt at it, too. Well, this is the second card. That's oh, right. And the, looky there. That's a LeVon Wolf. That's a well-known name around these parts. Well, we call uh, several players and or older guys the godfather of certain areas. I'd say he's easily the godfather of Alabama. He is well known. He brought a whole crew with him. He's got a lot of support here this Ooh, week. Oh, that's trouble. That's got to get up, Liz. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, not a good look there for LeVon Wolf. He should be the veteran on this card. Well, there's a little bit of wind, and he could have slightly misjudged it. That looked like it turned a little more than maybe he had intended, but. I mean, this is the USDGC. It's, uh, it's the second card. The wind is up. This is hole 17. It's in the afternoon. Now, here's LeVon in on one, out on two. He's throwing three. Wow, he's really choosing to go for the thick part of the green there. Well, he's he's bailing out right, but that's just barely over. All right. He, I'm sure he's disappointed. Next up on the pet here is Dutch Napier. Well, Dutch is going to do a flick here, and you know he just wants to bail out and and get over to that right side, stay dry and stay inbounds. Well, he's out of Owensboro, Kentucky, and he is on the second card here at the USDGC. Well, that looks good. Yeah, he's going to use the wide part of the green again as... Well, Dutch is a 996 rated player. Let's get on down to the green now and see just how they can handle some putts. Actually, first, let's see if Patrick May can get down on the green. Oh, that's going to be close, Liz. Oh, I don't know, Billy. That's his... Whoa, oh, yeah. my gosh. That's... <laughs> I think it might have touched the uh, pine, pine needle hay bales. Well, he is uh, barely in. He's in on two. Okay, now let's see how these guys can handle these putts. It's still a tricky putt. They decided to play safe and I take that LeVon's wide spot I believe going to be out, but I'm not sure. It looks like they're sort of jostling around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're a they're okay. long ways away. They've got a, a wind to deal with. They're all tired. This has been a really, really long day. Well, LeVon making his way on now. He's uh, This is 4-4 here, and he is in the bailout zone. Tough putt from here. Well, LeVon Wolf is, whoa, it looks like he definitely might give it a bid. Well, yeah, he definitely wanted to give it a bid, but you don't want to come in too high. You can easily go OB long if you come in there too aggressive. And now Dutch Napier. This would be a great two. This is easily 45, maybe even 50 feet less. Oh, are you kidding me? There's only about, what, 12 feet of fair ground oh. behind the basket, but he, what he a still bid. gave it a bid, yeah. Well, Patrick, now Patrick choosing to lay up and then to bail out to the right. Oh, it's and, just And he's beautiful. just laying up again. He's just happy to take his four. He's projected a four on this hole. Maybe he's looking at that and just saying, I'm going to try and do my projection. Well, I mean, anybody wants a three on this hole. They want to beat their projections all week long. That's what this performance edition is all about. But well, when you have to go with it, you have to go with it. Kevin Knuckley, look at this drive. This is for two. Well, it's up and it's in. What a good looking putt. Well, Kevin projected four on this hole with a two. His projected score for the round is 79, and he has seemed to just be playing just fine today. And here's Dutch now he tapping bet. out his part. All right, he's on to hole 18, and he's going to be done with this round soon, and they're going to get themselves some ice cream. What a beautiful sight. You see the water fountain in the background. If you've ever had a chance to be to Winthrop at the USDGC, you know all about this green. That's the second card here, some live action from the second day. Well, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed some of that live action from the grounds of Winthrop Gold. Now we're gonna take a look at the USDGC Partnership Rock Program. It's a solid program that really helps fund this tournament and also keep it going for next year. Well, Liz, the Rock Program is absolutely the reason that this event has been able to sustain itself for 12 plus years. Now let's take a look at one of those members just like you at home. Well, I'm lucky enough to run down the legendary LeVon Wolf out of the Alabama area. And, you know, you've not only been playing this sport, but you help grow the sport. You support the sport. You're involved in tournaments all over the Southern National Alabama area. What is it about the USDGC partners that drew you in? Because you've been supporting this event since its inception, LeVon. Well, I, I've always supported it. I wasn't a... Uh primary or contributing sponsor in the early days, but in the last, about the last four years, I've been a, a sponsor and a presenting sponsor the last couple of years. Bottom line, 
it's the biggest and best thing on the planet. Um, first and foremost is this golf course, the challenge that it presents is nothing like it. It's um, even for some top tier players, it's a very humbling experience. I decided to come this week just for the opportunity again to, to play the course. What Innova has done and a lot of other people, what they've done for this sport through the USDGC, it's really grown it in recognition, it's grown it in prominence, and it's grown it in skill level that it's required to, you know, to play and compete at a level on this particular course. There's a lot of courses around the country, around the world, that the top players can go and play and it really doesn't compare to what we have right here. Well, I mean, it's it's not just the ropes. It's it's the way that the, the course is manicured. Right. It's the way you guys are treated like professionals. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to tell somebody what the experience is like when you step up on hole one and Andy Green calls your name out from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, yeah, that's a very short hole, but that's one of the toughest shots in golf. I uh, couldn't agree more. To throw that hole one when, when the pressure is on like that. Um, the other thing, too, is the all the children that they bring out and the people, the spectators is out here, what it means to this area and this town, you know, it, it's more widespread than just that. But it's just the um, the way that the, that the USDGC is used to grow the grassroots of the sport. And I understand that's what they're doing this year with the changes that they've made. I've been one of those that somewhat has been, um, you know, I won't say adamantly opposed to what, what I think they've done to the tournament. You didn't but, just jump on board. Right, but I do understand, you know, the concept of, uh, of continuing to grow the, uh, the AM level and the grassroots. And that's why we that's what we got to do in order to make it better in the future for the top top tier pros. But um, you know the handicap thing, it's going to be a little bit different. But I'm here to enjoy it this week and here to to get my butt challenged on this course. Well, he's a USDGC partner, and you too can be a USDGC partner by purchasing those rocks. You help keep this event going. Levon, thanks for all that you do for the sport. Thank you, appreciate it. Now let's get over to Liz Carr where she's ran down some players for some Innova Champion post-round interviews. Well, hello, this is a post-round interview brought to you by Innova Champion Discs. I'm standing next to Tyler Graham. Now, Tyler, you're a 922-rated golfer with a projected score of... 82. 82, and who did you get to play with today? Uh, I got the pleasure of playing with Dave Felberg, uh, David Wiggins Jr., and John Olis. Now, I believe that most of their ratings, two of them are over 1,000, one of them is 993. Yes, yes it was uh, pretty fun to play with them, and they, they played some impressive golf. Yeah, and how about you? Were you feeling okay with your game, your projected you know, versus I, your performance? My performance is not as good as I would have hoped. Um, I didn't do very well, but you know, there's today, tomorrow's another day. I'll bounce back. Uh, it was a privilege to be able to play with those guys today, and I don't think it had any effect on how I played. So. Now, do you find that they're helping you through it, or do you feel like you're being really competitive with them and they're trying to be competitive with you, or that it's kind of, you know, you're looking to them for good shots and they're looking to help you or um, kind of, uh, you know, work together to make a good score? Well, I think anytime you're playing, it's your game, it's individual, but they're there to pick you up. They're not necessarily going to help you with the way you're throwing or anything like that, but when you do a bad shot, they're going to pick you up. When you do a good shot, they're going to praise you. So, you know, I don't think we're necessarily, we're all playing each other, but I think it was nice to play with them. They did pick me up from time to time. Well, it's kind of the vibe all week long. You know, we're happy to see you out here. You think yeah. you'll be able to get in next year? Oh, uh, I hope so. That's the goal. So. <laughs> all right, Tyler Graham, you got any shout outs for your homies at home? I uh, just want to thank Alan Beer for being my coach. I uh, appreciate all his mentoring. All right, Tyler, we appreciate thank you. you. Thanks a lot. All right, we've arrived at a post-round interview here with Kenny Glassman, our amateur world champion. So, Kenny, can you tell us a little bit about your round yesterday? Uh, yeah, yesterday I got to play with uh, Ken Climo, 12-time world champion, 5-time U.S. champ. Now, I mean, were you nervous? Were you excited to play with him? What were the emotions running through your system at that time? I'd say more excited than anything. Um, really, how I shot didn't matter. It was just the fact that I got to play with Ken Climo. Um, that's been a dream my whole life. You know, putting in the backyard, you're always imagining you're Ken Climo shooting that last putt to win a world championship. So to be able to play with him, see how he plays his own course, you know, the course um, was just awesome. Well, I, you know, we talked to Jonathan Poole and we told him that you were so excited about that this morning. And he said, you know what? You earned your spot to play with Ken Climo. So, I mean, you absolutely did it. You had the last tee time at Winthrop Gold yesterday. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about your round today. How are you feeling about that round? Uh, shot way better today. After watching the champ play the course, picked up a lot of tips, learned how to play some of these holes. So played a lot smarter today, didn't get aggressive. Um, 
really just played a smart game of golf and um, shot one below my projected score, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, well, we wish you luck for the rest of the weekend and like everyone else, trying to get a chance to get up to that lead card. Good luck, Kenny Glassman. Great, thank you. Well, you can see the day is coming to an end. Big fun today. When the rounds are over, it's a little different than normal. The music kicks in, the clinics start. It's action, right? From the last putt, actually. You know, it's great for the spectators and the spotters out here. You know, the players, anybody that stuck around to see some of that final card action. Uh, I mean, look what they get to have now. A big stereo system. Barry Schultz about to teach them a clinic. Hey, it's a great day at the USTGC. Well, it has been a huge day. Right now, we're going to get over to the DGU headquarters. We're going to look at the board because it has flip flop lot. Well, what a huge day it's been. I mean, yeah, you bet, Billy. There's been people, I mean, guys that never thought they'd be on the lead card, they're moving right up. Guys that thought they'd never be anywhere but the lead card are moving down. Well, it has flip flop, <laughs> and I'm not sure who's going to be in the lead group tomorrow. I know David Feldberg did not have the great day he had yesterday, but still had a good day. Well, and, you're right. You know, actually, John Key, he wasn't doing too well after his first round, but today he is sitting in the lead by three strokes. He's 11 down. Projected at 89, and yesterday, had a very tough day, shot a 91. Oh my gosh, yeah, and turned it, things are a little bit different for him right now. Leading the United States Disc Golf Championship, wow, I can't imagine the pressure he's feeling when he goes home tonight. Well, John, enjoy that steak you're going to be eating. I don't care if he's <laughs> eating a hamburger, it's going to taste like steak. But tomorrow, tie your shoes tight, buddy, because they're coming after you. <laughs> That's right. And second, now he's only three strokes off the lead. That's Bill Sharon. Uh, he's doing pretty well, too. We haven't seen him up on the lead card. However, Dave Feldberg, uh, is sitting at third place by himself right now, uh, four strokes off a lead. But we do have a three-way tie between uh, Charlie Coleman, Dutch Napier, and LaVon Wolf. Whew, well, those are some big names that are trying to get up to the top. Well, no doubt. And it's so nice to see David still up in there. David Wiggins apparently dropped back. He had some OB problems today. but Well, he's just sitting right behind them. Uh, he's only five strokes under, so he still has a chance to move back up into the lead. Well, f for Dave Feldberg, to be the number one rated player, to be the lowest projected player, to be doing what he's doing is simply amazing out here because he is going to have to put it together every day. He knows that. He comes up to the course realizing, I've got to have a world record round again, and he's doing it. Yeah, it, it's actually amazing, and I think that uh, it, he's accomplishing quite a feat for himself as well as kind of sticking it to this tournament and saying, I am the best golfer in the world, and I'm going to prove it this week. Well, we're going to stay here all week long until the last putts drop. This is the USDGC. It's getting a little late. The Barry Schultz Clinic is tying down, and it has been a long day. Day number two will be with you all week long. All right, folks, and at this time, I'm going to invite Barry Schultz to come up onto the stage. Uh, I know we're going to get this thing underway. Oh, well, well, welcome to my clinic. Uh, I've really been looking forward to this the last couple of weeks, trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do. If you are here to figure out or learn if you are good enough to be a pro, this is not that clinic. Uh, I don't know how that got in the program, but this is, are you a golfer or are you a thrower? And I think all of us are a little bit of each. And I'm going to go through a little disc golf scenario. We'll want a daily, you know, get to the course kind of thing, go through what happens at a golf course. And I'll give an example A and an example B. One will be a thrower, one will be a golfer. Well, let's see. Hopefully, we'll all be a little of each, but we'll hopefully, we'll be leaning towards the golfer side. And if you're not, by the end of this, I'll get you closer to that golfer side. Now, when you're playing in the holes, you actually get to the course, and you're actually playing golf, have you warmed up, or have you just jumped from the car and gone to the course? and started playing. Throw those full, full on 400 foot drives in your first two shots. Or do you play catch with your buddy, take five minutes to warm the body up, especially for your old guys, or do some practice putting or whatever the case is, warm yourself up. What side of the fence are you on on that one? Well, I think the thrower out there in life really depends on his power, depends on his two or three bread and butter shots. A golfer spends a little time from time to time and works on his craft. And I don't say you have to become a good, highly skilled golfer to be a golfer. I think being a golfer isn't a skill set. It's more a mindset, isn't it? Exactly.